and I actually do not know what it is. I gone through this box and I can't figure out exactly where this file is so if you know how to find this file please tell me because I don't. <laughs> Hi friends welcome back to the channel let's get our ninja on. If you're new here my name's Ash I'm 27 I'm a cyber security enthusiast and on this channel we do all things try hack me walkthroughs CTF live events and all that sort of good stuff. On today's video we're going over another try hack me walkthrough this one entitled ninja skills. For all timestamps links and anything else mentioned see the description below and let's get into it. Okay, so we've got Try Hack Me booted up here and we're on the room Ninja Skills. So let's scroll down and select Start Machine so we can get that booted. Uh, we do have a message here that it may take up to about three minutes to config. So please learn from me and before you start scanning and jumping into the box, let's just read the description because there's definitely something I missed. It's right here. If you prefer to SSH into the machine, use the credentials new user as the username and password. But that's sort of important that I did not see in the first time and I I just sort of skipped over that. All right, so we've got answer the questions about the following files. We've got 12 files listed here just with random names and the aim is to answer the questions as efficiently as possible. So if we continue scrolling down, we've got a, our tasks here. So by looking at our questions, we're staying in the file system. So we're trying to find these files and we're trying to find information out about these files. So let's go ahead and use SSH new dash user to log in. Yes and new dash user is our password. Great, so we're in. We've got a nice ASCII art of try hack me. Let the games begin. So we have a files directory, um, but we don't look like we have anything inside of it. So our first mission is to even find these files on the file system. So the command that we're going to be using is the find command, search for files in a directory hierarchy. So we'll start off with find and we'll say the location. So we want to find somewhere from the root directory down and we can pass through the name parameter. So we do know the name of these files. So let's just try and find one file to begin with. So if we pay in our file name and we run that, we run into our first issue where we see all of the errors from this command. We'll run that again, but we'll grab the standard error, which is defined by the number two. We'll redirect all the times it says permission denied, permission denied, like we saw that. We're gonna take all that and we're just gonna throw it away. So a common place to just throw it away is just called dev null. Just, it doesn't really matter where, we're just gonna throw it away. So this becomes a lot more readable. We found our first file. Cool, so we can put them in a file, we can copy them one by one, but since that this is working, finding one file, let's try and find two files. So we'll look at the help menu and this time we'll just grab this O flag and what we're doing is we're trying to find how we can match multiple expressions. So if we use the dash O, we can use expression one, which was the name of the first file, that's our first expression, dash O, and we can use dash name again with the expression of the next. So it might be a little bit confusing. So let's go ahead and run dash O just after here. So we can run dash O, which means, okay, we've done one command, let's go ahead and do another one. And we can paste in our next file that we're after. So after running that, it didn't work. Work. So there might be something wrong with our command or there might be something wrong with our box. Let's go ahead and repeat the process for another file so we can sort of troubleshoot this. So at the end, we'll go dash O just before dev null and then we'll run dash name again and we'll go ahead and paste in. So it does seem to be working. There's just something up with this particular file and I actually do not know what it is. I gone through this box and I can't figure out exactly where this file is. So if you know how to find this file, please tell me because I don't. <laughs> so now it's just a case of rinse and repeating. We can now have we can find these multiple files and we can just go one by one by adding dash o for the next expression dash name and then the file name and this is going to continue giving us a good output so once you have the entire thing written out it's going to look like so we can hit enter and then we see 11 out of the 12 files so there's still this missing file the mystery file but hey at least we have 11 out of 12. So i'm just going to go back on my local system and create a new files list directory and i'm just going to paste in all those files that we have so we can easily access them. I'm gonna quickly CD into that temporary directory where I made this run a quick Python server there and running wget on our remote system, just using the IP address of our local machine on port 80. 
thousand going into the temporary files we can just go and get that files list uh, we don't actually need to go on the temporary because I put the server there so yeah it's just files list cool so now we have the files list we've got our list of files all nicely organized so there's a few ways that we can solve this so I wasn't sure exactly how to solve this so I went and used the assistance of chat GPT to give me a bash script of how I can actually go through these files one by one so this is the prompt that I used and to my surprise Surprise, ChatGPT gave quite a good example of how we can go ahead and make this file. So it looks like it's given us a different output from the first time that I went through it. So I'm gonna copy the code from the first time, uh, which is similar, but slightly different. It's so going back to a temporary folder on our local system. I'm just gonna create a file search.sh. I'm going to paste that in, save that, and then run the same command of wget, but this time grab this file search.sh. Make sure you spell it right. So now we have a file list and we have this file search. Let's go ahead and look at our little bash script. So thank you to ChatGPT for giving this to us. We've got read in the file with the list of files to search. Read in the user's command. So this is where we can pass commands that will be run against each of the files. We've got loop through each file in the list and run the command. So let's go ahead and use change mod against file search. And we can now go ahead and use this file search bash script. So we're running the command. So let's just run ls dash against each of the file search. So we had an error file 30 no file or directory. So I forgot to pass through the actual files list. So now we can run file search.sh and as the first argument it will take is files underscore list, which is the list of files. So what command do we want to run against it? So let's just start by listing out the permissions and everything of the file. So we've got here running command ls-l against this file and we can see here results. So if we go back to our first question, which of these above files are owned by the best group? So we can go here and we can see that we've got best group is for this file and best group is also for this file. So it says answer with in alphabetical order. So D going first, then V second. Next, we've got which of the files contain an IP address. So for this command, we'll run our bash script again and we want to cat out each of the files. So because that each file is going to be in a loop, dollar sign one will be the current file it's looking at of each loop. So each time it goes around, it'll be that file. And what we can do is we can grep. So it'll cat each of those out and pipe it through grep, which we can search. So we're gonna be using a little bit of regular expression, which is just a pattern and matching language. So what I've pasted in here is to find an IP address and you can just search up that this regular expression to find it exactly. Essentially, it's just finding digits 0 through 9, 1, 2, 3, 0 to 9, 1, 2, 3, 0 to 9, 1, 2, 3, finding that in the format. So it looks like we've had a syntax error. So if we just fix that up, I'm just putting double quotes around our search term, we end up getting a lot of false positives back. So I'm not exactly sure what went wrong with this time around. But if we manually search through, we can indeed see there is a 1.1.1 in this file. So that is in the format of an IP address. And if we run that again and we just grab for this result, we can find it a lot more cleanly. And let's go see if this is actually the right file that we're after. So it was a little bit hacky, but we did find it. So next up, this is something else that I did wrong. I thought I was searching for this hash value inside of the strings, but the question actually reads, which file has the SHA-1 hash? Meaning which of these hash values of these files match this? I don't know if that made more sense, but I'll show you what I mean. So we can run our command again, but this time we're running SHA-1 sum so we're finding the sum sum we're finding the SHA sum of each of these. So we can see here they list out. So all we're looking to do is match up one of these with something that starts with 95 and ends with A94, which is exactly the one that I'm looking at. So we can go and confirm that by pasting in our file and indeed we find it. Great, so which file contains 230 lines? So for this one, we can use the WC or word count, print new line, word and byte counts for each file. So we use our bash script again, we'll run the word count command 
but we will just use the dash L for only showing us lines. So all of them have 209 lines. So the only file that we can't find and I can't confirm if it has 230 is this hidden file. So through the process of elimination, we can guess that it's that, but I, I still can't confirm it. So if you know how, please let me know. So next up we have which files owner has an ID of 502. So if we run ID, we can see the ID of our user. And if we look in the home directory, we do see that there are other users, newer user and this EC2 user. So if we look at the ID of the new user, we can confirm that 502 is of this new user. So if we go back to our bash script, and then we just type in ls-l, it's basically any files that have got this newer user as their owner. So new user is us, but if we go all the way down to the bottom, we have newer user here, which is this file. So then lastly, we have which file is executable by everyone. And we don't actually need to do anything else. We can stay right here and we can just look at our permissions of our files. So all of them are the same except this one here where we've got write, read, execute, write, read, execute, and read and execute. So ourselves, admin, all three are execute. So that is definitely this file. So we go ahead and we can paste that in. And there we go, another room completed. So I hope you've improved your ninja skills. So I definitely did things a little bit hacky in this room. That's just the way that I solved the challenges. Um, I was looking at write ups after and you can continue just using the find command. There it turns out there's actually an execute flag inside of find that you can use to just continue running commands against the output of find. So that's one way of doing it. At the end of the day, I think learning the different ways is really what it's all about and just getting better at this. So however you solved it, it doesn't really matter. It's just fun either way. So thank you so much for watching up until now. I really appreciate it. Please do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave a link to Wiggle CTF, the last CTF on the channel. So go check that out. That was more privilege escalation and trying to break into the system, which was a lot of fun. So definitely go check that out. Otherwise I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.